I've only heard of Black Myth Wukong earlier this year through some excitement surrounding this game. I initially wasn't planning on playing this due to me just not being that good in Souls-like games in general, but the Elden Ring buzz a few months ago made me get into it more and having half of the Shadow of the Ur Tree completed, curse you Mesmer. In the embrace of Mesmer's flame. I joined the rest of the crowd with the Wukong hype. While I am aware of some controversy and allegations with the Chinese devs, I honestly couldn't care about it because it's China. They have a whole different set of rules, standards, and culture where even if I do think it's messed up, there's not much that us Americans can do or even maybe the rest of the world to some extent that can do to change it. So I won't have anything that's not related to the game's content in any shape or form to negatively impact or positively impact my review. And so I pretty much got to the end of the game within 35 hours of playing this game. I did miss a lot of side content on accident. I watched snippets of other people streaming and saw like areas that I have not seen before and bosses I haven't seen. I'll go over this a, a bit more later. But seeing this game absolutely pop off in terms of like Steam player counts is honestly justifiable. This game plays really, really well and is very, very fun. But is it good enough to be a game of the year contender? The game, from what I heard, takes story beats from a very popular Chinese show, Journey to the West, that contains Chinese mythology. I don't know about you, but I know nothing about Chinese mythology, and so I went with almost zero knowledge except that Wukong exists. And honestly, this game made me want to learn more about it the same way that a game like Hades intrigues me and want to know more about Greek mythology. Yes, there are holes and things that I didn't really understand, but if I went into playing Hades with zero knowledge of Greek mythology, I think the experience would be very similar. As long as I know what's currently happening, I know who the important people are and what the end goal is, then that's fine by me. And Black Myth Wukong does just that. I think people would want to compare this and Elden Ring. Even though I love Elden Ring, I do think Black Myth Wukong does a better job in storytelling. Now, Elden Ring may have better lore, but from a very casual point of view, I was able to know and appreciate the story a lot more in Wukong. That's through like the cutscenes, visuals, a diverse cast of characters, and <laughs> although the English dub is kinda bad, but I didn't really expect like a Chinese studio's first AAA game to be able to like outsource it to top tier English VAs or however the process works when China is their main audience. I also think the intro battle is really, really good. It's visually very, very good, and the way it introduces and sets up the world was very well made. It was cinema. The story of Wukong is split into six different chapters, with each chapter containing its own mini storyline within them. And when you complete each chapter, you witness a piece of lore about, which I would assume, a piece of Chinese mythology that you just played through. Each of them have a different art style, with one of them being a stop motion animation, which is probably my favorite one of the six. Then you get to inspect a very detailed mural that you can inspect some parts of it to learn more about. This made the experience much more meaningful and authentic. Having all this treatment to the culture made it feel like a real experience rather than something that's clearly fiction. After experiencing these, it made me question to where is this piece really a part of the mythology in a very good way. The graphics are gorgeous. It's pretty amazing how good it is and how much detail is put into this. The big things for games like this to me is how many screenshot moments there are. Elden Ring has so many screenshot moments, um, from different angles of that huge bright glowing tree down to the far view of Moog's palace in Australia or whatever it's called, fighting that spider void boss or whatever at the end of the Lake of Rot. There's so much more. Wukong arguably maybe has more, which is astonishing, especially when you include like the OG Assassin's Creed uh, viewpoint camera work into Wukong's meditation sites. And just in general, just how much textures, visuals, and the fidelity. I mean, it's just beautiful. And I'm only on high graphic settings. And to think that there's still a cinematic graphic settings, those with super high-end Starforge PCs are eating good with this one. There's a plethora of different and cool characters, both humans and creatures, and, and a combination of both. I remember seeing someone complain that they played like 30 hours and have not seen a single female. You see a beautiful female in chapter 3. Yes, I skipped content, but I, I got to the end of the game within 40 hours. I think it's unfair and it feels very picky that this particular person spent 3 hours in the first 2 chapters 
and complained about a lack of a certain piece of content. Also, spoilers, in one of the chapters, the story is centralized between a family of females. I don't know exactly what people are mad about the devs for with the whole sexisms or whatever. Obviously, it's bad, but let's not pretend that they completely excluded females from this game, and the females present in the game are no pushovers. I got my ass beat and got stuck on their boss fights for a while. Anyways, the characters are cool and the creatures are cool and creative. The combat is pretty fun in Wukong, but can get stale after a while. When I compare this to Elden Ring, yeah, a particular build that you do gets pretty stale fast, but there are so many different ways to fight that you could easily pivot to a different way of fighting. Wukong tries to solve this by allowing the Destined One, you as a player, you don't play as Wukong himself, to have three different stances. Smash stance, pull stance, and thrust stance. I started using the smash stance for a while, then swapped to a thrust stance after realizing the range of it. I never really used pull stance as it didn't seem cool enough to me, but that's just preference. Other than that, it's pretty responsive and it feels nice. Stringing together basic attacks into a combo with the staff is pretty cool to witness even when I have probably done it probably a thousand times by now. What makes this game less of a Souls-like and more like an action RPG title is all the other stuff you can do in combat. This includes things like as the spells and spirits you're able to cast. You can have up to four spells, which includes things like Immobilize, which basically freezes an enemy for a short duration of time, Pluck of Many, where you can summon like your own shadow clones and they fight for you for a short time, uh, like Cloud Strike, which is basically like a substitution jutsu. You go invisible, leave a decoy where you cast the spell, along with two transformation spells that you can do that allows you to transform into someone and temporarily fight as that transformation with no drawbacks. There's even a spear system that's similar to the Echo system in Withering Waves, which by extension, I guess, is basically a Pokemon mechanic to where there are certain enemies in Wukong that when you defeat them in combat, you collect their spirit. These tend to be like elite level enemies, not so much bosses, but not a pushover like normie enemy. Uh, you can equip a spirit, use its like special abilities, and they can vary from being able to attack someone from a distance with a long sword, uh, summoning snakes to inflict poison damage, or like the one I currently use, just a big ground slam that staggers most enemies, bosses included. And because of all these different ways to fight, it makes it feel less like a proper Souls-like experience as the gatekeepers of Souls games would call all of these options as cheats. There are things that makes it feel like a Souls-like experience, such as the bonfire checkpoints, uh, respawning, boss fight, but then there are also those options for combat, and you can keep your currency when you do die so you don't have to loot your dead body. Um, so it's hard for me to say what it leans more towards, the Souls-like genre or the action RPG genre. To me, because I'm this conflicted, it's Probably an even split, but I can understand why if someone claims that it does lean one way or the other. Black Myth Wukong at first felt very linear, which I wasn't totally against. I guess playing Elden Ring before doesn't really help, but I've played a lot of linear JRPGs, so it would rarely be a complaint of mine. But using the game is separated into six different chapters, I think the way the world level structure between these chapters were very different. Chapter 1 was very linear, but Chapter 2 had this like illusion of following that pattern, but is actually very open. I remember watching someone play through like a part of Chapter 2 after I cleared it, and I didn't realize how much content I accidentally skipped over. And I thought that was pretty cool, but it sucks when I remember that there was a point when I needed like more things to do before fighting like that Chapter 2 boss, but I didn't know what to do. Not having a map sucked, because you'll come across like forks in the road, that you can obviously only pick one way, and with my goldfish memory, I had no idea where that fork was if I wanted to return to get like some extra loot or whatever. Having a map would be perfect. Having a map would also help with like the world boundaries too. Wukong has invisible walls instead of natural barriers. I was okay with that because the vistas in the game are gorgeous. If they had a rock there, you wouldn't even be able to see it, but having a map helps confirm that you are indeed hitting a wall. Uh, there has been times where I thought I had to just hug along the invisible wall and find an opening. That didn't exist, so I just wasted my time. And just the fact that something like that in Chapter 2 is basically a maze to get around, it would be very, very helpful, at least for me, to have.
I remember one of my complaints about Elden Ring was not having a quest log just because of the sheer amount of content in that game. That it was really hard for me to keep track, especially if I decided to take a break and play a different game for a bit. Wukong doesn't have a quest log, but there are some side quests that lead to secrets. And I believe they are actually labeled in-game secrets. And I was able to get to the end of the game by just walking forward without really needing to do any of like the NPC quest lines or whatever. I did backtrack um, to do a couple, but I never did them as I was running through an area for the first time, if that makes sense. And so even though I'm, I'm, I'm big on quest logs, maps, waypoints and all that, I think Wukong is actually better without a quest log just from how rewarding it is to discover these secrets. It still needs a map, but other than that, I think it's good. My biggest criticism of this game is definitely the pacing. Not story pacing, I think the story was paced very well. I think the combat pacing is really bad. You've probably heard it from other people, but it's truly a boss rush gauntlet. There were many, many times I was still recovering after beating a boss because I was put in the tiger boss prison for an hour. Then probably five minutes later, I was thrown in the pen against, you guessed it, another boss. I think this game is advertised with like 80 plus bosses or something. And all the bosses have their own shtick and just fighting that many bosses is cool. But not in what feels like a tournament playoffs format. I said it before, but the game visually looks amazing. The story and lore is amazing. It would be better if they fleshed out of those more. A good example is in chapter 3 or something, you get thrown in like a literal prison and you have to get out. It took a while, but it felt like a proper dungeon or just place that I had to explore and conquer. Maybe I'm spoiled by Elden Ring since I guess I'm still technically trying to get through Shadow of the Earth Dream. Curse you, Mesmer, again. In the embrace of Mesmer's flame. But having like a Stormvale castle really helps with like the theming and allows you to showcase the world through the visuals and lore and whatnot. So I didn't enjoy the pacing of boss after boss after boss because I wanted to see more and learn more about the world. And honestly, I think that's a good problem to have from the devs perspective. This is pretty much like their first attempt at a like AAA quality game. And apart from like other smaller things, the main problem was the pacing of these fights because the other parts of the game that they made were really good and I wanted more of that. I'm sure if these devs make like a sequel or similar game to this in the future, they will learn from these mistakes because honestly, it's pretty easy to do when you compare it to something like, I don't know, Starfield, where I thought like even the core gameplay and systems of Starfield were really, really bad. Is Black Myth Wukong a game of the year contender? I mean, there's still some big games coming out uh, these next few months, but I honestly think Wukong is most definitely a game of the year contender. Game of the year itself? Debatable. But Black Myth Wukong is a wonderful experience through its visuals, fluid combat, a plethora of lore, and bosses to glean and defeat. I mean, there's a reason why this game was able to make it to like number two in Steam charts with like a peak concurrent player count of like over two million players. At least me, as an American, it was very cool being exposed to Chinese mythology in this type of way. Yes, there are a couple of modern features that are absent, such as like a map, and the pacing of constant bosses can be exhausting. But this is one of those games where the positives are so well done and well made that you are willing to forgive the negatives. I don't know about you guys, but when I notice that in the game, it's usually a really, really good game. Now, I got some more backtracking to do, gain more XP, because I am stuck in prison against the final boss. Then after that, there's a bunch of like secret bosses, I, I guess that I might want to do, along with like a new game plus and all that. I highly recommend, especially those that play like any sort of like Souls-like games, to check this game out, because there really is something special about this game. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video if you like this type of content. I plan on playing and reviewing Star Wars Outlaws coming out soon and maybe Warhammer when it comes out. You can leave a comment down below or come join the Discord in the link below that I'm active in. See you guys later.